How, how are you? Hey everybody! Hey everybody, welcome Disney friends. Uh, welcome to WDW Park Hoppers Live. And tonight we are at Chicken Guy. We're out on the, the patio because it's such a nice day out. It is gorgeous. And we actually have a special special guest tonight. So first let this is Park Hopper John. I am Park Hopper Sid. And this is the Chicken Guy Sauce Slinger. Hey there, what's, what's going on guys? How are you doing tonight? What's going on? I, you know, it's just a quiet evening here at Chicken Guy in Disney Springs. You know, right. Labor Day rush right. is gone, and we're with the true fans here. Right. And I'm here to deliver some of these fantastic sauces we have here. So what, what is your job? I see you walking around. You've got an apron full of sauces. You know, we, when you order your food, they ask you which two sauces you want. But then there's this nice gentleman walking around with options. So I usually have six to eight bottles. Um, it varies from day to day. Sometimes they try to push the ones they aren't selling. Sometimes uh, it's just random. A lot of times I would just hand pick personally my favorites. Right. Ah, so what is your there. favorite? My personal favorite, it depends, but I have a few. Would you like okay. me to name them? Sure. Okay. The top ones for me are going to be the sweet sriracha barbecue. Nice. nice. Lemon and pepper. Okay. Nice. Chipotle ranch. Oh. And the Nashville hot honey. All right. Oh. Which one of those do you have with you? None of them. None of them. All right. Them. Well, All right. Go. So we're just going to have to get them to come back then. So there's one other thing. Uh, so Park Upper Suit said that you can sing. Yeah. There's a lot of music going around, so it might be a yeah, little difficult. Yeah, music just but... got louder on us, so. I can do my best to overpower them. All, All right. right. Well, lean on in here. The microphone is up there. Okay. Are you ready for this? Yeah. We're ready. Aunque la vida cueste llorona, no dejaré de quererte, no dejaré de quererte. That's that, awesome. That was Good wonderful. Stuff, man. Thanks. All right, this is Luis. He is the sauce slinger here at Chicken Guy, and I'm sure we'll see him walking through a few times tonight. So thank you so thank much you for joining much, us. Thank you very much, Thank you. I appreciate that. See, it's dinner and a show. And hey, a you show. never know what you're going to get here <laughs> in Disney Springs. So we are so bad. Thank you very much. We are so glad you guys are here. If you don't know who we are, we are WDW Park Hoppers. You can find more out, uh, about us at www.parkhoppers.com. Uh, you can find us all over the internet. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Facebook, obviously here at WDW Park Hoppers. Now, like, the minute that we went live, it's like everybody's competing for volume. So, with the live entertainment that you hear, sort of the Elvis in the background, that is... The, uh, the live entertainment that we just found out starts at 7 p.m. every night. So, woohoo! Good to know. So, uh, one last thing before we get into uh, all the fun news is if you haven't signed up yet for uh, our new book, uh, Top 10 Walt Disney World Lounges, go to uh, wdwparkhoppers.com slash top 10. Sign up. Uh, it's not like a spam thing. All we're going to do is going to give you some emails when we get closer to publishing the book and for those of you who sign up you get a shot at getting that book at 99 cents when it comes out and that is top 10 t-o-p-t-e-n right so not the numbers 10 the letters 10 right so. all right let's get into it all right so first we're going to start with the rumor mill and the rumor mill has been that there is a closing coming to disney's fort wilderness people have been very concerned that it is the hoop to do review and Disney has stepped forward and said something is closing. It is not the Hoopty Doo Review. The Hoopty Doo Re Review is safe. So, For now. this is a very long running show. This is over at the Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground. And the Hoopty Doo Musical Review will continue for now. Um, they have said in this statement that that is not closing. So now the rumors are all flipping to Mickey's Backyard Barbecue. Because it has to be something, right? Right. It can't just be everything's fine. No. Well, so. I think that uh, Disney is doing some work back in the old River Country area. And uh, they're, they're putting in another resort or some kind of hotel area back there. And I think they're trying to create a little bit of space for parking or extracurricular stuff. And I think, you know, especially Mickey's Backyard Barbecue, as great as it is, it's a, it's a nice plot of land and a very key position on that piece of property so I think that it makes sense for them uh, if they're going to close it to put something else there uh, to service that resort if the resort is happening right there right uh, I think that makes sense I hate to see it go I think um, we're kicking around the idea of doing a meetup there so we can have 
Because we've never been to Mickey's Backyard Barbecue. No, we have not. We have been to the Hoop to Do Review. Yeah, so we got to check that out. So that's that's something very important that we must do, <laughs> as Stacy says. Stacy and the must do. So we're going to check that out. Uh, all right, so going through the rumors. We've already done the rumors. Okay, no, so. we have a confirmed rumor. This was a rumor. Now it's not a rumor. It is a confirmation. Yeah, you got to file this one under crazy talk because I, I'm struggling with this one personally. Last week we talked about the rumor that they were going to bring seven dwarfs and Snow White mm -hmm. into Artist Point over at Disney's uh, Wilderness Lodge. Well, guess what? It's not a rumor. It's actually happening. Uh, file this under crazy town, in my opinion. Well, it's, it's, it's storybook dining is yeah. how they're referring so, to it. Storybook dining at Artist Point is, uh, is going to be coming uh, sometime this winter. Uh, you can venture into the Enchanted Forest of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. You're going to be able to meet Snow, Dopey, and Grumpy, and you might even have uh, the opportunity to have an experience with the Evil Queen. Now, here's the thing. It would be an experience. It would be. I, I get it, and it's a great location, yes. but it's just, it's Artist Point, and, and I think that they have a great venue already in Whispering Canyon, and right. I, I think they're... It's just odd to me that they would do that, but hey, we'll, we'll check it out. And it's no longer going to be like a dining area. It's going to be more like a buffet, kind of, because it says they're going to do a price fix menu, including shared starters, a choice of individual paid entree, and sweet spells finished. So it's not going to be like Artist Point where you can go get the bison and all right. the, the really cool meats anymore so it, it, it's kind of an end of an era so I, I think they struggled personally I think they struggled because we walked past there a lot of times and there was nobody in there they were a little high on the price point you know and people wanted to be able to go on their vacation and have a dinner in their shorts and t-shirt and right. you didn't feel like you could do that there right and while I, I love that they're doing a character meet and greet there it, it just those characters don't make sense to me in that resort. There's so many other characters that they could pull that, that are not necessarily present throughout the parks that they could do in that space that makes sense in a, a, a Western California feel lodge as opposed to Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Well, actually, Snow White and the Two Dwarfs and the Evil Queen. I think it's kind of nice. All right, this is one we're going to disagree on because the fact that Snow White was the first full-length feature film that Disney did. I love that they're doing everything they can to pay homage to it and to keep it current right. and to keep it in, you know, in the relevant culture of Disney and to make sure that it doesn't get lost with everything that's new and trendy. So right. I, I'm, I'm kind of okay with it. Sorry. All right. No worries. No worries. All we right. don't have to always agree on everything. I know. But before we move on, let me ask oh. you a question. Yes, darling. One, one to ten, mm -hmm. SDK to Ravello. Yes. Where does Chicken Guy fall? Like what I did there? Wow. So, I think he's talking 1 to 10 on service because we've had some rough things and we've had some great things. Um, I'm going to say so far we're at like an 8 on service. How do you like the food here? The food is good. So, yeah. the chicken tenders are like sliced you know, uh, chicken breasts, so they're a little thinner than you're probably used to. The breading is great. The We had some of the fries and some of the fried pickles, and the fried pickles got a little kick to them. A lot of kick. And, and that's cool. I mean, uh, for those of you who can't handle a lot of the kick, like my insides cannot handle that. No. Uh, my insides are iffy. What's up, bro? I remember my first beer. <laughs> you remember your first food and wine festival? I do. <laughs> I do. I would. I would probably say overall. Uh, I've only ducked my head inside. Actually, Sid went in. It's and really cool in there. Sid went in and got everything uh, together while I was prepping for out here. I, I think overall, I'd probably give this place a solid six to seven. I feel like we should be watching in the background more because I'm afraid we're gonna get no. moved or something by one of these stupid kids. No. Back in the day when I was doing stuff with uh, uh, travel with Rick, I learned to not pay attention to what was going on behind me because if someone might, wants to make a complete donkey out of themselves. Let them. I'm okay with that. Oh, wait, know? they have a they have a sauce. They have a sauce called for you. Donkey sauce. Ooh. All right, that's just for you, dude. All right, moving All right. on. All right. Well, actually, before we move on, 
I wanted to remind everyone and thank you. You guys have been fantastic. I know a lot of people have been shopping on Amazon. You've also been going to the Park Hopper shop. So www.parkhoppers.com slash Amazon. It just redirects you to your Amazon page. Uh, it just lets them know that we sent you there and just gives us a few pennies towards out of their profit. So your prices don't raise. They don't add anything extra. And also if you're looking for some things that are a little more you know, personal, a little more kitschy, we would say definitely check out www.parkhoppers.com slash shop. And those are just some things. Some are Disney, some are just home decor, just some different items. Check it out and let us know what you think or if there's something you'd like us to see put on that site, let us definitely know. Absolutely. All right. Uh, Big deal coming up. Yeah, apparently... This might come as a shock to you, but Mickey Mouse is turning 90 years old. 90. Looks good. Looks good for 90. He does. Doesn't look a year over four. It's amazing. So anyway, uh, Walt Disney World is going to join. He lost a finger somewhere in there. Yeah, Walt Disney World is going to join the worldwide celebration for Mickey Mouse's birthday. We probably need to get closer together. All right. And make this a little bit less, you know, a target. Because uh, he's, he's circling back around. I guess I can just see it. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, Walt Disney World joining with the worldwide celebration of Mickey Mouse's 90th birthday. His birthday is going to be celebrated in every theme park, every Disney theme park uh, around the world. It's going to be amazing. Magic Kingdom visitors are going to be able to salute Mickey uh, during the Move It, Shake It, Dance, and Play It street party. I'm so proud you got that out. I had to read it. They're going to sing Happy Birthday to Mickey. Uh, the Dapper Dans are going to be there, and they're going to uh, help you sing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be a special dance party in Tomorrowland because, hey, there's never enough dance parties in Tomorrowland. There's Let's, not. And no. when is this happening? This is happening uh, from November 16th to the 18th. So it's just like a three-day weekend to celebrate his birthday because that's when we celebrate him. Absolutely. Uh, next year, now this is when it gets weird to me because after the first of the year, once we get through the holiday season, that's when the parks really start to really celebrate because they don't want to mix Mickey's birthday in November with Christmas because somebody may or may not be confused whose birthday we're really celebrating. Okay, well, it's kind of like... You know, it, it'd be like the king's birthday or the queen's birthday over in England. Right. You know, they start her birthday celebration around the Trooping of the Colors because that's the official country. This is when we celebrate the birthday. Right. And then she celebrates on her actual birthday and then pretty much many of the days in between. So. Right. Absolutely. You know, uh, this is the king of Disney. So Disney is telling us that they're going to have the world's biggest mouse party but we have no details on that but this is what we do know we do know that uh, Shanghai Paris Hong Kong and Tokyo will also be getting a mouse party at the first of the year activities are going to include nighttime spectaculars of course merchandise merchandise I know right specialty foods and beverages during the events uh, Disneyland in California is going to be hosting a big cavalcade for Mickey on November 18th. Uh, there's going to be a lot of other cool things, but one of the coolest things that, that they've done in honor of Mickey's birthday is happening in New York City, of all places. Yes. Um, Mickey, the true original ex exhibition, is an interactive art exhibit that's going to open in New York from November 8th until February 10th. Uh, this is a great time to go visit New York to celebrate Mickey. It's going to be a pop-up gallery on 10th Avenue. It's going to be open Tuesday through Sunday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And it's going to be available. And, and this is not New York City pricing. Not at all. $38 per person. It's not even Disney World pricing. I know, right? $38. And really? If, if you want to go, you go to Disney.com slash Mickey true original all one word yes that's excellent i'm excited about that i am very excited i don't know if we're going to make it to new york but i cannot wait to hear from everyone who lives up there and to see what you you know the artwork and just what's going on so definitely can, let us know i can all but guarantee we're probably not going to be making it to new york hey stranger things have happened we've got a lot to do i am working on his silver lining if i have to tattoo it on him myself all right all right what else is going on all right minivan service I feel like every other week there is a new update for the minivans. They get excited about the minivans. Though. All right, minivans, red vans, small SUVs, big white polka dots, drive all around Disney. They work for Lyft. Yeah, all right. Now that you're caught up, minivan service is now available between Orlando International Airport and all Disney World Resort hotels. 
So this is not the Partner Hotels. This is not the Bonnet Creek. This is not the Hilton. Nope. This is only to the resort. Disney so, owned and operated. Yes. So the minivan transportation within Walt Disney World property can be arranged through the Lyft app. The minivan's airport shuttle service reservations must be made by calling 407-WDW-PLAY, P-L-A-Y. So, if you're going from resort to resort or park to resort, then that is fine. You can use the app. If you're talking about the airport, you have to call them. All right. All right. So, the hours of operation for the minivan shuttle service is for flight arrivals between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. And for flight departures between 9 a.m. and 12 a.m. So, if you've got one of those 4 a.m. flights, you are SOL. Um, each minivan holds up to six passengers and around eight medium-sized suitcases. And up to three complimentary car seats can also be provided. And ADA accessible vehicles are available. You have to tell them when you call. Yes. So, do not expect them to just send one and not know. You need, right. to, you need to prepare for this. So the cost is $150 each way, gratuity not included. Wowzers. And you have to be very cautious if you're one of these people that has like a lot of luggage. Yeah. The minivans are not equipped to carry a ton of luggage. Right. When they say eight medium size, that means like four and a half large. Right. So. I, I've had a, a couple of horror stories where people came in and had more luggage and had to order another minivan just for their luggage. Just for their luggage. So that was a $300 whoopsie. Yes. Yeah. So that's cool. All right. So, so. All right. What did we do last weekend? Well, last week, uh, you know, start, starting their 564 day event called Epcot's International <laughs> Food and Wine Festival, almost a flower garden. Food and Wine <laughs> Festival launched last Thursday. Flower and wine? Garden yeah. food, I don't know. And Sid and I uh, got to go, and uh, we checked out. We were, we were planning on going in, getting our magnets, and then walking around and having a couple of snacky poos for dinner and maybe a cocktail and calling it a night. Right. What wound up happening is, is we spent almost an hour and a half inside the festival center and had a great time. There was so much to see. We still, we still didn't see it all. No, we didn't. Uh, and we were not standing in line for an hour to get the magnets. The magnet the line, line went, looked like it, yeah, but we were there maybe 10 minutes. Really quick. So, so. Uh, if you're a fan of Food and Wine Festival and have been before, and, and we are guilty of slamming Disney, so we're going to be guilty of singing their praises because they did something really, really right this year. The Festival Center is probably the best laid out, best uh, use of space that I've seen in years. There it's is still awesome. room for improvement. Yes. We'll get to that, but it really was, they did an amazing job in um, making sure that everything was laid out in a way that it was accessible, there was good traffic flow, you could see the booths before you walked into them. They really used every nook and cranny very well. They did, and they, you know, bringing in some seating areas, incorporating that into their design. So, you know, you have the, the, the craft beer area, and then right behind it was a seating area on either side of the uh, shimmering sips. Am I right? Shimmering, shimmering sips. sips mimosa bar. Uh, they had some seating areas, and there was multi levels of seating. It was really just well laid out, and they put every little nook and cranny. It's a big circle. They had different things, like uh, they had the wine area, so you had all the different wines that they had there that you could purchase, but you could also purchase samples of right. during the festival. Go ahead. Our, uh, well, what I was going to say, so the wine area, it wasn't just you walk up and it's a wine booth. So they had a large booth out there that they were doing wine flight. Well, then you could go behind, and they had a whole display of buying wine bottles. And then they had a pour-your-own wine flight, so on another wall. And so you sort of were walking all around and seeing different things. And then they had, in the middle of it, like an island display of merchandise. Right. And so, and that was all just the wine area. Right. You know. During the festival, they're going to have different uh, vintners and different chefs there doing bottle signings and book signings. So that's going to be kind of a cool thing. If there's somebody there that, that has a, a winery that you want to go get a bottle signed, that's a great opportunity. Absolutely. I would, I'd totally be down with that. If John Lasker's here, sign me up. <laughs> All right, so they have a chocolate experience. It's called From Bean to Bar, and it's hosted by Ghirardelli. And we actually did not participate in that part. We um, 
we went through and we got our magnets and then we walked through all the merchandise and they had some great shirts and some wonderful options for you know glassware and little souvenirs and things like that you know and we walked through the wine shop and then we went over to what I wanted which was the Shimmering Sips Mimosa Bar. Yeah. And there are five mimosas, four in flutes, one frozen. We tried the four flutes. Right. Tropical. Big fans of the Tropical Mimosa. Yeah, it yeah. was really good. It was, uh, it was really cool how they did it because they also had some like snacky foods there. So like chocolate covered, uh, chocolate covered croissant some other things no 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 chocolate croissants they're oh, not covered sorry it's baked inside my bad so, almond croissants they had some cookies they just had some great things so. So they had some higher end uh snacks there so it wasn't all just drink 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 and then next to that was the and craft. stale popcorn yeah, yeah no there was none of right that next to that was the craft beer area which was great uh i gotta say honestly you know they moved the the craft beer area from the Odyssey, which they're not using at all this year, no. they they moved that into this area, and you know there are six beers in in the two flights, and of the six, I think I like two of them. How many did you like? I like three -ish. out of out of six. I mean, I drank all mine because that's just alcohol abuse. But right, um, there, I don't know. They, there's a few beers that they brought back every year that are just not the greatest, and right. there's so many great Florida breweries that they really could. You know, jump, you know, just have a few jump in, jump out. And so there we go. He hit a button instead of just letting it go. It would have gone away. Okay. We're getting messages. So keep keep moving forward, Uncle Walt. Wow, really? All right, so what did you like then, Smart Alec? Uh, I actually kind of like the way that it was laid out. I love the, uh, the coffee bar. Joffrey's is sponsoring uh, their coffee and tea area where they have several different bags of uh, Mickey coffee or Disney coffee uh, at different price points and all of the coffees were available for, uh, for available for uh, annual pass order discount thank you yes that was it and uh, so you can go check that out the only problem with that was is they were pre-ground yeah we I, like to grind our own we're yeah kinda... we're snobs that way I was gonna say snooty, but. Uh, and I will also say, back in the back, they had the Junior Chef's Kitchen. Uh, normally, this is where they have like the Big Chef Kitchen. They've moved that over to World Showplace. Right. So they're not doing that inside Festival Center. Um, now they did have, um, so they have like a theater in the middle on the inside. Right. And that's where we had to walk through to get our magnets. And I will say, I think they could have used that space better. It could have been a waiting area because the seats are built in. It's got this gorgeous big old cartoony chandelier up above it that was turned off. And then it's got a built-in screen and projector. So they were there, but sitting in front of the screen was, they're called moon balloons. It's the big glowing light on a stand. And it was just sitting in front of it so they didn't have to use the chandelier. We weren't quite sure about that. Yeah, it was kind of odd. So, but, but overall, it was amazing. It, was it great, really was. Great space. We actually had an idea for that today. We were talking about it. Oh, yeah? So one of the big things that they're talking about is um, Ratatouille. They could have just been playing that movie in a loop. Could have been something to keep you entertained during the yeah. walk. So. Yeah, they could have had uh, a little bit better use of that specific space. But overall, it was great. Yep. Uh, Looking forward to going back? Absolutely. In fact... Can we go ahead and make the announcement? Yes! Next week, we're going to be live. WDW Park Hoppers Live will be live in Epcot. At the Festival at Center? At the Festival. I don't know if we're going to be at the Festival Center. We'll Maybe be we'll somewhere. be somewhere. Somewhere where we get a, a view of people flexing and all that good stuff. So, But it'll be more quiet. I can guarantee you that. So, I yeah. won't. I won't guarantee that. So, I'm distracted because we have the musicians over here. It's like the Elvis, and then there's a woman singing, and there was a little bit more. And then over here, there's a speaker that got turned up when they started. Yeah. And then you've got the people behind, and the people walking by in front waving, and I'm like... It's a lot. A lot going on. Uh, where are we going to be on September 15th? September 15th, we're going to be in Meisner's Lounge oh, for the monthly meetup. That's It'll be us and Disney by the Numbers and Disney Parks Podcast. That's right. And there might even be an appearance by our new friends, Orlando Like a Local. Yes. Uh, so. <laughs> great guys. I love those guys. They're, they're the second best compared to us. 
Anyway, yeah, so that's yeah. going to be at the Grand Floridian on September 15th at 7 p.m. Come I'm hang out. Chips. Come hang out. Have a good time. We're just going to sit and relax, listen to the orchestra. Maybe we'll go down and watch some fireworks. Who knows? But other than that, my friends, we appreciate you taking time to listen. Hopefully the volume wasn't too bad here. Uh, make sure that you come to www.parkhoppers.com slash newsletter. Sign up for that. Uh, got some really cool things coming down the pipe for that. So other than that, we want to make sure that you come visit us at www.parkhoppers.com. Four Parks, One World. And everything in between.